Today I'm going to show you guys a barbell that can pretty much do anything and be turned into anything that you could possibly think of. It can adjust to different sizes, can be used with free weights, it can attach to a variety of resistance bands from tube bands to loop bands. You can do isometrics and you can even attach it to a machine as a bar attachment. So this is the F2 bar, which is part of the F2 training system, which you can find at f2trainingsystem.com. Here you're gonna see the various barbell configurations or packages, as well as some accessories. You'll also notice there's an equally versatile foot plate on the website that you can bundle together in their elite package or buy individually. Honestly, to make this video not go over a half an hour, I'm gonna save the foot plate. Like I said, it's equally versatile, all sorts of stuff you can do with this. I'll save this review for a later date. And while this looks like yet another iteration of some sort of resistance band, barbell, foot plate type system, I would say this is something that's kind of totally separate because of what you can actually do with it. This just happened to be, yes, you can use it as a system like that, but there's so many ways you guys can actually take advantage of these parts you guys are gonna see here. And I actually will say, this whole setup and this system has actually been around for a long period of time. I've actually had this barbell for quite a while, really testing it out kind of behind the scenes, trying to keep it out of view. So I'm excited to actually get this video out there so I have to keep kind of hiding this thing because I wasn't really sure if I, one, if it really worked and would work and how I personally would utilize it. While it's not perfect, this literally could be the only barbell that I would need to use in my garage gym space and for my workouts which says a lot because I got tons of barbells here in the corner, some off camera, tons of stuff I've shown you guys in the channel. I really don't need another barbell. So I'm like, do I really want to use another thing? And when I started using this, I realized that, yeah, a lot of the barbells I'm actually using, I actually can get rid of because this thing can literally be not just used as a resistance band or weight type barbell. It can be specially configured to actually accommodate some needs that I actually had other things that I was using, such as say a total gym, Saudi men's trainer, even a lever gym, you actually can configure this thing to kind of lock into a lever gym. So there's all sorts of things, whatever your imagination can kind of think of, the creative uses you can think of about making a barbell and using it for something, you could do that with this type of setup. So I've used it so much, tested it, and had many, many long discussions with the inventor, Al, who I should have on the channel probably in a, good, in a future interview because he's got a really cool story about his history kind of creating these things that I have gone ahead and actually partnered alongside him in this F2 training system to feature some of his products, just because it was such a good fit and how I can use these things on future reviews and machines as a barbell and what I'm actually capable of doing with it. So in this video, I'm gonna do my best, try and scratch the surface on all the things you can do with this F2 bar. I'll get into some of the moving parts and components that is kind of easier said than done. And honestly, was a little intimidating at first when I saw all these pieces, but I'll do my best to kind of talk about what you can actually do with some of these parts here. I will of course talk about some very honest pros and cons about the product. And then finally, who do I think would really get the most out of this product? I don't think it's gonna be for everybody that might go without saying, but as you watch this video, I think you'll kind of see if this is gonna be right for you or not. Regardless though, hope you guys enjoy this. This is hitting on all the cylinders of products that I like to showcase and feature on the channel. So if you like this content, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And again, we're doing out another giveaway. So if you wanna win an F2 bar, all you gotta do is submit your name down below. We're gonna be giving out an F2 bar. I forget what package off the top of my head, but you're gonna get an F2 bar, I'll just say that, uh, to anyone living in the continental US. So unfortunately, not to anyone overseas, but only continental US. Entry down below, leave a comment, and we'll do a randomized drawing in about a week's time. So the components of the F2 bar really depends on the package you pick up and any other accessories you're gonna to add to it. There are a lot of moving pieces, which is why I kind of keep things organized in this little bag here by various little segments of what I kind of organize them out to. This actually folds out. You can break this bar obviously into three parts and then put it in here. So it works out pretty good if you get some sort of storage container set up for it. So the base or starter F2 bar comes with everything you guys are seeing here, basically allowing you guys to do anything right out of the gates with resistance bands. So loop style bands, tube style bands with the eye bolts. Of course, you can take these things off and mix and match them how you guys want to. The basic moving parts of this are composed of two 17 inch bars held together in the middle by this really solid connector piece. Now what's good about this, I have other bars and I might reference this later on. Some of these you know, bars that break into pieces, if you look really closely, the pieces are super thin and either not that long, or I mean not super thin, but not that long. And so for me, I've always said, I don't know if I'd trust heavy weight on here. This one, I can show you guys this later, can withstand a lot of weight. It's long and it's very thick, so I liked that. 
Uh, also notice this little middle point here. This allows you to put some space in between here if you wanted to and say, put this little middle piece in there and add an eye bolt, something like this thing, or you could say the RT hook, whatever you wanted to, and just open up some doors for attaching, say chains underneath this. This could be a attachment piece to a machine if you guys wanted to. That's what's cool about these middle connector pieces. And at the end of this bar, there is a little end cap that's included. This end piece is a shorter version of this, kind of a little more stockier port position of this, but the other added feature, which opens up tons of doors, uh, some that I've yet to even explore yet, with this little hole here. So I can screw this little piece in here, put the RT hooks on this little hook right here onto this thing. I can put eye bolts on this side as any kind of traditional, like, you know, tube-based resistance band might have. Works out great for attachments. And this is the part I really wanted to stress test because if I'm gonna put forth a lot of weight, say on this position right here, with something like this, say I put an eye bolt in the side and I want to say, use a good versatile bar for my total gym, put all my weight into it, or a cable machine like my Speedians. I want to make sure it's not gonna snap on me because I've had some things snap on me in the past, but I will say this thing is pretty strong. At the end here, you have what Al dubbed the, this is a couple different Chain Beast models. This is called the Chain Beast Pro, and that is this thing at the side here that does this cool little, has a lot of rotation to it. And this is a patent pending thing. He has a bunch of patents. I don't think it's patent pending. I think it's fully patent issued, but really cool thing. This chain beast, I think it was called the chain beast originally because he was attaching chains to it. But from here, there's two holes on both sides and I can attach either eye bolts or I can attach, he calls these RT hooks. And he's actually had these for a while. So this allows you, of course, to put things like four inch bands in the side here. And these things are pretty stress tested. Again, I had the question going through my head. Are these things gonna be strong enough? Will they bend or warp? And I'll show you guys a video of Al really ripping on this thing and stress testing it. And not only did the bar hold up totally fine, I pretty much trust this bar at this point, but these things also held up no problem. So that was actually very cool. And then since we're on the topic of Chain Beast, he actually makes the Chain Beast XL, which slides onto any two inch collar. This was initially again made for chains. So you could put this eye bolt dangling there has these Allen wrench kind of bolts on each side where you can kind of, you know, again, further kind of lock it down. Two side components, you want to attach one to the, one to top, one to bottom. There's a safety option for this. If you want, let's say they're squatting, they lose themselves, you know, the, the safety straps they actually can catch you. You of course can attach these RT hooks down here to use this in any kind of a barbell. You'll see some clips here and videos where you actually can put collars on the outside of this to have it kind of spin and do some really cool stuff. So again, like I said, tons of different options at your disposal. Really briefly, because I know the question's gonna come up, people are gonna say, hey, this looks really similar in features and function compared to your collar hooks. Pros and cons of each product, I'd say the Chain Beast, more versatile, you gotta lock it down with Allen wrenches, take some time to kind of slide on and off, but you got two holes here. This is just more expensive, and the collar hooks, uh, shameless plug, check out collarhooks.com, and order yours. These are just very easy, I would say much simpler to kind of slide on any two inch collar, so I'll just kind of say that. Every product like we're discussing here is gonna have their unique pros and cons. So I thought I'd just get that out of the way because I know the question's probably gonna come up. I do also wanna show this, and then you can see the problem I have with this video, trying to keep this short, guys. Uh, but you actually, there's a modifier attachment. You can contact Al, we can show you this for the Chain Beast Pro. You can put the Chain Beast on a one inch pipe. I believe you can also make, there's also a modifier for a two inch barbell as well. But I made a whole video talking about just how easy it is to just attach, throw some resistance bands on a pipe and there's always a solution of like, how can we find a nice little hook to kind of go on a pipe and you guys got the solution right here. So you can attach a Chain Beast and really any segment of really any barbell and that's what's really cool, especially with the Chain Beast XL. Only minor downside is you gotta get these little kind of adjustment points here, but that also opens up further doors where if you got a barbell, even this one, you could put Chain Beast in any kind of given segment that you preferably wanted. And then the F2 Bar Pro package comes, of course, with everything you saw in the starter package, throwing in a pair of the Chain Beast XLs as well. You now get the another bar, another 17 inch bar you can put in the middle to now extend this out. It actually works on a squat rack. And then you also, of course, will get more adapter connector pieces there too. And then you get the four inch F2 adapters. You'll see either these a lot. I think you see more so in the videos started using the eight inch adapters. These are kind of add-on accessory. 
These are also really cool. I believe these come with the Elite package too, but don't quote me on that, check it out. Uh, but I'd say my sweet spot go-to setup that I had was actually two bars in the middle. I'd had a space in there for isometrics and I had these on the side. And that just allowed me to do a lot of things from resistance bands to weights, to using this thing as an attachment. That was kind of the sweet go-to spot, but you will see it kind of being stress tested in the exercises when I have all three bars in there putting on upwards of 315 pounds. So that's also a nice little feature on that. Now I just wanna give you guys some bullet point pros and cons about the F2 bar. Right out of the gates, of course, goes without saying, the versatility, uh, portability, creativity that you guys can do with this barbell is without question. And I'm, there's still limitless stuff you guys can do, not to mention future iterations and other upgrades you guys actually will be able to see with this thing. I'm actually still surprised at what Al has shown me you can do with this. Aside from that though, I would say another thing this has going for it is it is surprisingly durable. I kept checking this thing throughout the use of me using it and just seeing like, is it bending a little bit? Is it warping? Even when you guys saw 315 in the bar, it really seems to hold up fine. It's bending a little bit, but didn't really damage any of the integrity of the bar. And I think that's really important because I'll get into this later on as far as the cons of being that it is kind of modular and in pieces. I was very surprised that it was able to hold up and that's very important to me, especially when I'm gonna be using these things with heavier loads or on various equipment, say supporting my own body weight. And then going along those lines of durability, you kind of have to talk about that durability with the cost factor too, because I think right away people might be thinking of, well, I can get these cheap ones off Amazon for say doing resistance bands. And so this gecko bar I've covered in the past, I'll link it down below if you guys are curious. Also modular, I believe this kind of, this is Al's patent, I think he told me about I think he did say this example, I won't go into that now, now. Uh, but you can see if you unscrew these parts of a, of a bar like this, they are very thin. And I said that in my initial review of this, that I don't know if I would really trust this. Mine's already kind of bent and I would not want to put excessive weight on that. Definitely not body weight, but of course, this thing just can't even, doesn't hold a candle to the amount of weight you can put on it. But more importantly, I think are those middle pieces. So, but if I do screw this out and kind of look at, you know, how much space and how much thickness I got with what's supporting that, that connection point, not a whole lot when you compare this. So while this thing is, this thing goes for like 40 bucks, it's definitely more expensive. You're definitely getting a stronger, outside of just versatility wise, what you can do with it, I would say more versatile in the weight load and just bands you can actually handle on something like this. Uh, getting into the cons, the F2 bar, let's say the obvious right up front, this thing is not the best looking bar, at least to me it's not. It looks kind of primitive, but I, I kind of like that. You guys know, you know, pun intended with the old channel name. Uh, definitely a little more rugged looking, not as clean and, and as polished, but the functionality is, is still there. It can seem a little confusing, especially if you got like all these parts kind of thrown at you like I did in the box. I didn't know what to do with it at first. I felt like a little kid just with a box of Legos, which is a good and bad thing, but it could be a little confusing for some people. And I think some of the cons aside from just the way it looks, you know, I would say the knurling is not the best. It's not like the most high quality knurling, say compared to something like an expensive X3 or Harambe bar. Those things have really good quality knurling, just really solid grips. And now this leads me into who do I think this bar is really for? Because I was gonna say one of the cons of the bar is that you know if you don't wanna mess around with parts, you don't wanna mess with creating your own you know, creation here and taking the bar off into pieces, this is certainly not gonna be for you. That could be a potential con of this. But for some people, this is also its greatest benefit and asset going for it is you kind of have something that is fun to kind of experiment and try new things. And maybe you don't want, just from practical sake, a zillion barbells laying around for specialized things. So many, many times I found myself just grabbing this as my lat pull-down attachment or uh, my band bar because it was just already kind of set up or just using it for a straight easy curl bar, just a straight bicep curl bar or even uh, tricep extension you guys are seeing here. So a lot of stuff I use this bar for just because it was so accessible and it's sitting right next to me. Of course, I would not recommend this barbell to anybody who is thinking about using it for serious stuff in a squat rack, like bench squat and deadlift. Definitely invest in a traditional basic barbell. That should go without saying, I think. Uh, and part of that is if you were using it and you had it kind of set up with three bars in here, it can be a little cumbersome. Maybe you don't want to mess with unscrewing it. It takes a little bit of time, you know, like whatever, probably less than a minute or something, unscrew it. But maybe you don't want to deal with that. And that's the value of having kind of multiple bars. So I would say this is in the realm in general. If you're kind of a creative person, you want to do some stuff that's unique. And there is a necessity point with this because there are some things I'm doing with this that I simply just wouldn't have access to. Uh, that and there is some other pieces of components that's going to go part of another larger system, what they have. Uh, but you'll kind of see that in the near future. 
That'll be it though, guys. Any questions, comments, feedback, let me know about this particular setup and this bar. Let me know if you guys want to get in on that giveaway. Again, we're giving away an F2 bar to anyone who leaves a comment down below who lives in the continental US. But of course, leave any comments you have down below and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.